if I can here before I um, play a little Skyrim before I go to bed, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just go a little bit into the first chapter of Husserl's Prolegomena to Pure Logic. That is the introduction to his logical investigations. Um, I've read all of his works, but um, I'm starting to want to go more in depth in talking about them and kind of thinking about them more, uh, more, you know, more than I have before. I've, you know, I've thought about his works, generally speaking, and generally speaking, what, you know, I've been like, well, what, what, what phenomenology is, is basically like this stuff, you know, I've been doing that, but I've never really gone, like, in depth, in depth with his text. So I'm going to start with, well, in my little hiatus I took, I, uh, I read Husserl's experience in ju in judgment, which I have. I don't I don't own I don't own own that book, but I read it and I took about ten pages of notes on it. Um, where 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 I I plan at some point to make a good long video on it. Um, yeah, so that's that's my plan at some point. But so I did that, and I'm gonna try and do the same thing when when it, when it comes to. Um, the logical investigations, and starting, for, of course, with the prologue of the logic. And I'm going to do only, like, I'm going to discuss, I'm not going to discuss the parts on psych psychologism so much, um, because um, I've talked about that before in a couple of videos of quite, quite a while ago, for one. Uh, second reason why I don't really want to get into that is because it's kind of not a thing that I really want to, want to get into and I understand fully, you know, why why phenomenology is not, you know, a, 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 a psychologistic thing, you know, that, that's kind of so, so, something that is, that I, you know, understand. There are a lot of chapters of in the Prologue and the Pure Logic that are, that are about just, just that. Um, so you can go into that, into that and look at those if you want to, but I, I don't. I'm not going to be doing that in depth. So basically, I'll be doing the first two two chapters plus the last chapter of the of the prologue, which is about the idea of pure pure logic, and then I'll jump up into the actual investigations. So basically, in the first chapter, it's a chapter about logic as a normative practical discipline, and what is here is a theory of science for one. It's a philosophy of science, um, and it makes me think about um, the philosophy of science of the, of the, the, the logical positivists and more more co contemporary works in the in the philosophy of science. Um, when I graduate from uh, from uh, college, which won't be too long from now, uh, maybe a year or so, something like that. Uh, I'm either going to go into graduate school um, pursuing, you know, having a concentration in philosophy of science um, or continental 20th century American, or 20th century continental philosophy or possibly not continental 19th century philosophy, one, one of those three. I would really like to, you know, go to go into those, those are my top three, you know, topics of interest, but so... Husserl does have a theory of logic, has a theory of philosophy of science here too, which is very, very interesting. Uh, because not not only not only does he does he do this philosophy of science here, but in the Crisis of European Sciences, which I have now on that bookshelf over there, he does a lot a lot of that stuff too. You know, he tells you what the actual crisis is. It's just it's it's really a really neat, neat book. So I'm just gonna go like a few sections that I picked out to kind of to kind of discuss. He um. He says that sciences are theoretically incomplete, um, and they don't have, really have a grounds. Like a, the so the scientist doesn't really have grounds for for his for his activities. Um, there's there's and it's basically incomplete. That's really that's really that's really really what it is. And the activities of scientific creation and theoretical evaluation. Um, it's basically it results for it it uh, results are um, necessary for scientific demonstration of facts. Um, there's no need for grounds 
to execute actions um, due to the science is being incomplete. Um, so there's um, it's incomplete and it has lack of inner clarity or rationality. Um, and he, he asks, kind of asks here, what are the foundations of scientific um, scientific um, act of scientific a activities? Uh, sciences are not theoretically justified, so there it's a it's a nor it's a normative practice, and kind of in this program, you know, he kind of makes a little a little d distinction between th theoretical and normative, which is something that I would definitely appeal to. And he also does have a foundationalist idea about knowledge as well, which I would also definitely appeal to. Um, I don't know, I've kind of been, with the foundationalist co coherentist thing about knowledge, I've kind of been, you know, on the fence about it because there's very convincing arguments for both. Uh, especially, I mean, for the most most convincing arguments i found is for those from Moritz, Moritz Schlick in, in the positivist era, the logical po positivist era. Um... So sciences is so these so these sciences and the, are theoretically incomplete. Um, it's normative, but they, but it it doesn't have a theoretical grounds for its actions. Um, but there's no need to there 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 isn't there isn't a need for a ground to ex to execute the actions to do those things. But the question is. What is the grounds as to you know what are we going towards? Um, furthermore, there's the theoretical goal of gaining this justification or um, you know having the sciences theoretically justified as it is a normative a normative discipline. Um, the the theoretical goal is a metaphysics and a theory of science. Uh, which is investigation about the world and what science is. It's so, thus philosophy of science. Um, it's about metaphysics and theory of science, and it's about the, and it's about questions: Does the external world exist, and how does one go about figuring that out? Um, and how does philosophy play in science? How does, you know, um, how does this, how does all this stuff work, will work together? So, um, I'm, we're going to undergo a invest in, on investigation concerning all of these sciences, especially the theory of science. And we're going to do this all equally, and this is basically what a th theory, th theory of science is. It's a, we're going to, have a investigation of of all the sciences which are a normative which is a, a normative discipline and we're going to just kind of look for some sort of a ground uh, a f f foundation for it um, so this is a theory this is a epistemology for one and it's also a philosophy of science um, metaphysics are mentioned but it's, you know and he does kind of do, do, he does some metaphysics here but uh, um, Honestly, this is that's basically what this is here. It's um, philosophy of science and epistemology, and there is a logic that can be pulled out of this and looked at. But you know, um, the possibility of of a justification of logic is the theory of theory of science. So the lo the logic also does play play a part here. Um, and he's going to kind of say how logic is itself a normative discipline. Science is concerned with knowing, of that of knowing. Science should provide preconditions for acts of knowing things. Um, knowledge uh, is one possessing truth. It's an object of correct, ju of correct ju judgment, he says. So... Here it is. It's a big idea of of epistemology and philosophy of science. And if you read philosophy of science, you know, you will kind of get this idea of how philosophy of science is kind of a intersection of epistemology, metaphysics, and um, philosophy of language, and you know, a lot of this other stuff. And you can kind of just 
what that's kind of the whole idea of what a philosophy of, of science is. Um, so, not everything that accords with truth is knowledge. So, there's a, he's saying that there's a relation between, between truth and knowledge, or not everything that accords with truth is knowledge. Um, so it's kind of like when they say in the um, contemporary theory of knowledge, knowledge is justified true belief, where Alvin Goldman, for one, uh, came out this and really asked that explicitly, is knowledge justified true belief? Uh, that's a different different matter, though. Um, just because something is true, it doesn't mean that you know it. So knowledge is described as a luminous certainty um, to where we acknowledge it. Um, to what we acknowledge as lumin luminously certain is, and what we neglect luminously certain certainly is not. So, if you have you heard of that, that's something that you'll find in Descartes and Locke, for one. Um, Locke, I believe, used the term uh, luminous obviousness, um, and De Descartes in the third meditation, which is in this book that I own, um, kind of really does does get in does get into that. Um, he and he does say in the in the third meditation about you know being certain of something. He kind of does. He talks about the relation between cer certainty and doubt quite a bit, really. And uh, he kind of do does this by uh, says that to be certain has to have some kind of luminous obviousness and some sort. He says it a little, little differently, but I don't recall. I've read so many things today. Um, knowledge is is in a distinct relation to certainty. Um, and the mark of correctness is inward is inward evidence. So he the, the big term in this chapter is inward evidence. Um, that mark of correctness that um, luminous obviousness, which is what he, which is, uh, Husserl uses a version of that phrasing. I, I may have, you know, written down, I, I'm not sure if he uses that. I, I read this last week, so I'm not quite sure. What I, what I do is I will read something and then I'll take a bunch, bunch of notes on it and then I'll, so sometimes I'll forget about it and do a video maybe a week or two later. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's still something that I've read multiple times before, so it's, you know, still fine. Genuine scientific knowledge rests on inner inner evidence. So, what's going on here is not really a f phenomenology yet. Um, this is not really a phenomenology yet. It's the prior scene before he really gets into that. In the investigations, some of them are phenomenological, some are not. Um, I mean, they all ha uh, they all are cohesive, and they all work together, but some of them are strictly ph ph phenomenological, some are, some are not. Well, if we move to some of Husserl, Husserl's later works, um, it's all, you know, intensely ph phenomenological. But this idea of inward, of inward evidence, um, somebody who's a strict empiricist or a logical positivist would not say that. Um, and that idea of inward of inward evidence is the way I see it, a phenomenological concept. It's a mark of correctness, a luminous obviousness. Um, if you read uh, the logical positivist Mark Schlick's paper, F Foundation of Knowledge, he says that towards the end of his paper that um, knowledge and such. Um, it's, it's a very complicated thing, so I'm not, I'm not going to try to reduce it to a few things, but it's about when you are coming towards knowledge, when you, you know, co you, when you go from, conf from confirmations up towards predictions and up to, towards more confirmations and build up towards knowledge, and you 
get things correctly from from your prediction to your to your confirmations, you have this joy of those observation statements having been f fulfilled. It's like a similar to a mark of correctness, as uh, as Husserl is saying. As far as evidence and its extent, knowledge um, extends also. As far as this inward evidence extends, knowledge also extends there. Um, so, and this is also about um, a system of knowledge. This is epistemology in that it is a system of knowledge. He says here that isolated bits of chemistry knowledge does not consist knowledge does not consist in knowledge of chemistry, um, because you know that, you know, because you know that putting chemical X and chemical Y in a beaker produces Z, um, and plus a couple other bits of bits of info doesn't mean you have cohesive knowledge about about chemistry. Um, so it's a so systematic. Coherence with theoretical with with theoretical um, science, um, where one finds grounds for his knowing. So, you know, the, there's that word coherence, which um, can be confused to me as something else. But he is definitely Husserl. Husserl is definitely not a co coherentist by no means. He puts he puts experience as the foundation of his of his of his knowledge. Um, definitely, you know, that's definitely what what, what he does. Maybe maybe not as explicitly, but he does. Um, the high standard of knowledge is the goal. So we have the highest um, perfect theoretical aims. It's a systematic form of science. Um, so, the system peculiar to science um, is true of a correct science, and it's not our own invention. So, if we have a system peculiar to a science, um, is true of that correct science, you know, it's not from uh, for ourselves. So he's kind of throwing away the, you know, the explicit idealism there um, um, but within that systematic form of a science when a system peculiar to a certain science um, is true of that correct science one must present in things that we must discover so it's not things that are of our own invention, but it's like a, a a world that is for us to discover. So in a way, it is objective, but in a f the f phenomenological sense, even though he, he does not use the word phenomenological yet. But if you understand the idea of phenomenology, you can see where this co where this hooks up. Um, systematic connections of truth. Um, gives you a ladder to progress so that's that you know that's a good phrase that he uses a ladder to progress um, systematic connections of truth so he has this explicit this connection between knowledge and truth um, just, just 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 because you have truth that doesn't mean you 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 know something that you could there are conditions for for, for, for things being true and conditions for, for things being known and that is the the system the systematic connections within truth is the lot of is the lot of pro the progress so that's you know where we can find the wrong is and move upward towards knowledge um, if we have knowledge then we then we definitely have truth um, the ladder to the highest um, regions of certainty it's that's basically what this is. Um, inward evidence of a state of affair, X, um, stamps the the state of affair as having real being. Okay, so this is the idea of inward evidence. You know, it's often later just referred to as evidence in uh, in some uh, later works, but 
Um, if I perceive a certain st state of affair, X, that brands that that state of affairs as having real being. That you know, that's as if it were something to discover. So we have this connection between between truth and knowledge. Uh, so we need grounded validations to pass beyond what is given to us. We need grounded validations to move beyond what is what is given to us. So, um, so we need a theory of science which is in logic. Okay, um, loosely validated isolation does not make up a system of science like like you said before. Science requires a unity of validatory interconnection. Um, so it's not research within separate truths, but the it's of this systematic validatory interconnection of truths. Um, research into a science as sciences as systematic unites unities is not um, so we have to go into those you know we have to look into what those you know processes you know or the, those validatory procedures procedures are there are validatory procedures towards um you know giving you know building up this knowledge and truth so this is a science of sciences there's a logic here there's a theory of science and there's a theory as to how one does this um logic is a normative discipline in the sense of the theory of science. So, this theory of science, this science of sciences, to which we build up towards knowledge and truth, that is the sense in which logic is a, is a normative discipline. Um, it is a normative discipline within, 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 the, within the sense of a theory, a theory of science. So, logic... Um, It pertains to it uh, seeks into what pertains to genuine and valid sciences. So, if a science has a certain telos or a certain end, then it seeks to you know look at these general valid general these genuine and valid sciences. So logic. Is the technology of correct ju correct judgment, um, and he refers to the uh, philosopher of, her of hermeneutics uh, Schle Schleiermacher, um, who defines logic as a technology of specific knowledge, um, and uh, that's basically what all this is. It's a basically a philosophy of science. It's a uh, Epistemology and logic as to how one builds up knowledge within within, within science. So I think this is very very cool, um, I, and I compare this to, you know, c contemporary th uh, philosophy of science and just kind of think about it, think about it that way. And this is definitely found foundational because a the theory of sciences, um, or the logic as a normal discipline, is the Science as to how we, you know, give grounds to, um, you know, how we give grounds to our scientific activities and our sciences, and we kind of put a ground there, and we he's basically putting a f foundation for all sciences and all the and all the activities of these uh, of the, of this sciences, and then from there, given this foundation one can move upward towards a certain knowledge and truth which are related um, in the way that he says where 
the well, he says that that um, if one has knowledge, one has truth. But if one has truth, it, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily the case that one has knowledge. Um. Anyway, so I'm gonna uh, in in a, in a different video I probably will look at chapter two of the Prolegomena to Pure Logic, and then, um. Yeah. And then I'll probably skip to chapter eleven, like I said, but. Uh, if anybody does, if anybody does want want me to say anything about psychologism, which is of um, chapters three through nine, I believe, um, then I then I then I can. But as of now, I definitely don't really really want to because I've done that already, and there's only so much I really want to be be saying about it. And he's kind of like a on a big offensive against it. So then he definitely wouldn't like Berkson because Berkson is definitely, definitely looks at his looks at things f philosophically from a psychologist psychologistic perspective.